Good morning, Booktube, YouTube. This is Johnny. <laughs> I uh, it is a Sunday morning here in West Michigan. It is February the 13th. It's a Sunday morning. It's 9:20 outside. It is bitter cold, icy snow. Just typical Michigan weather and uh, I thought I made it make a video it's been three days I get kind of freaked if I go five days six days without making a video and so I thought what I would do since I'm not really in the mood to make a video I just would stop by and say good morning it's a new week hope you have a good new week we're going in the middle of the month Writing in my diary this morning as my habit. I'm on page 149 for the year 2022. Yeah, writing in my diary and uh, I'm not really in the mood to read anything heavy. I got up at 4 o'clock again this morning due to my affliction in my right leg that is it scalata scalala I can't pronounce it my uh see here I, I keep on this little card all the words I I usually can't spell <laughs> and it's um s c i a t i c a I, you know I can't pronounce it but I have on here like granola I mean my wife made granola my wife makes granola my wife eats yogurt and granola almost a couple of times in the mornings and our granddaughter Josie when she comes over after school likes granola granola and yogurt but I can't, I cannot pronounce that word. Quarantined, pestilence, <laughs> quiche. You know, my wife makes quiche a lot. I can't spell quiche, so I keep this near me it's because I'm always like ibuprofen. I'm always taking that due to my my pain. See, here I am. You know, you can tell I'm an old guy. An old guy just rambling here. This is supposed to be about books. <laughs> what am I reading this morning? Well, like I said, I'm not really in the mood. I got up at 4 o'clock a.m. Got dressed and dozed on the couch down the lower level. Had the space heater blowing on me to keep me warm. But I never really slept. So I'm kind of tired this morning, kind of cranky. I did feed the birds just a minute ago. Carol left for church. She said she won't be home until one o'clock because she has to tear down the coffee. They always have coffee in the mornings in Sunday school and they have coffee after the morning worship service. And so women have to volunteer to tear down the coffee and clean everything up and the older women in Carol's church are all becoming widows and shut-ins and so there's not many other women who most women who have families are married and have kids don't volunteer for that because they have to rush off home so you have to have women who don't have anybody at home except maybe their husbands or widowers or widows so my wife has been doing it a lot more now these days so uh, so I was gonna I got out to read this morning I showed you this book Jonathan Edwards and deification reconciling theos and reform tradition by James R Saladin so I, I've been reading that I've read 145 pages of this but I'm kind of tired this morning and I got this out 
I should just got this last week. Jonathan Edwards, Spiritual Writings, Classics of Western Spirituality. I got a book in the mail. Now this book, I was really surprised. When I looked up the bibliography back here, I saw all kinds of Edwardian books, scholarly things. And some were cheap and some were very expensive, but I always looked them up. And for when I get into an Edwardian mood again in the future, I'll buy something. But there was one book that was going for $85. And I said, in places I looked at and But then Amazon had it on for $16. <laughs> so I grabbed it. And it's this thing. It's a fullness received and returned. Trinity and participation in Jonathan Edwards by Sin Young Tang. There's a picture of him on the back. And this was his... Ph.D. in Systematic Theology. This is a revision of a dis dissertation completed at Princeton Theological Seminary under the supervision of George Hunsinger. Sun Yang Tang argues that human participation in the divine, a classical theological axiom most notably associated with the Eastern Orthodox tradition, is a central theme in the theology of Jonathan Edwards. This notion, Tang contends, is a defining motif for the entire systematic sweep of Edwards' theology, and it serves to focus and determine the con contours of Edwards' thoughts. Fullness received and returned situates Edwards' theology within the fold of classical theological tradition while arguing that Edwards is a unique and creative form in reformed theology. So I don't know, it was only $16, and I wanted to add it to my Edwardian collection, and uh, I'll try to get into it. I have been reading, <coughs> as my habit, is that Rudolph of Saxony, The Life of Jesus Christ, Part 2, Volume 1, Chapters 1-57, to I'm on chapter 33 of this volume, the, the final volume, the fourth volume in, in this classic spiritual work comes out next month. So I have all four volumes. I, I've already read the other three, no, the other two. I'm about halfway through the third volume. I'm on page 500. <laughs> this thing goes over almost 865 pages. People on BookTube are doing March Mammoth. Well, I've been, I do mammoths all the time. So uh, I read this yesterday. And then I, I've been reading Reformed Systematic Theology, uh, Spirit and Salvation, Volume 3, by Joel R. Beakey and Paul M. Smalley. Uh, I've read in this March Mammoth where the 506, 593 pages. Uh, the other day I read his his uh, chapter 25, Adoption, Part 1, Biblical Theology. So he goes to the the doctrine of adoption, that we are adopted into the family of God. And then I read yesterday Theoretica, Practical Theology, The Works of God and the Fall of Man, Volume 3, by Petrus Van Minstret, translated by Todd M. Reisner. I read yesterday on uh, predestination. And so he goes through predestination, reprobation, election, uh, the work of the world and the work of six days, the evil angels, good angels, uh, man in the image of God, special providence, general providence, original sin, actual sin. So I read that. So that's why I've been reading in the mornings and for devotions. Also, I've been reading St. John of the Cross on the Dark Night and reading In Context, Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, and Their World by Mark O'Keefe. 
So that's what I've been reading in the mornings when I'm somewhat awake. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I have a piece of paper here. I was going to, I want to remind myself, I have this piece of paper. I want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers who watches me and I wanted to say hi. His name is, I wrote it down here, Jim Clark in Louisville, Kentucky. So Jim, thank you for your com, uh, for watching me and <clears throat> do pray you're having, you have a good week. Yeah, many years ago, we had some friends who lived in Louisville. And we met them when we were in, in seminary. She was the, uh, she worked for the seminary library. They were an older couple. They both have passed away now. We called them Uncle Bob and Mrs. Ruth. Mr. Bob was retired army pharmacist. And after he was, I got, when they got out of the army, he went to Bob Jones University and he got, became a school teacher. And then he retired and Ruth was a librarian. Uh, I forgot what she did exactly in the, uh, can't remember. But they were both in the army for many years. They were, they were stationed in Germany and England, Iceland. They had two girls and really great couple and great Christians. And they would come over all the time. And after I left seminary, they would, they even came here to Holland and visit us. And we used to visit them when we were on the road. We would travel up to here Holland to visit Carol's parents. But we would stop in Louisville and we would visit with Bob and Ruth, Mr. Bob and Mrs. Ruth. And they lived in Louisville. Um, and I remember that going to a park there. And so Louisville, Kentucky is a very nice place good memories with Bob and Ruth. Now they've gone to heaven and they're with the Lord Jesus. But so I hope you're doing well, Jim. You're in our prayers. All the people in my, I pray for in my, so subscribe to me. We don't know your names. I don't know your situations, but God knows. And so I just lift you up, praying that God would be with you in His mercy and grace and love. So what else I've been reading? Still reading uh, The Nekonami of Thrift Shop by Herma Kama, Kami. I, said, I know, I just, I'm almost finished with this. I, I was at the Book Nook Friday and I picked this up. Used, I bought it for a dollar. Nights in the gar Gardens of Brooklyn by Harvey Swadas. Swadas. These are short stories. He lived from 1920 and he died in 1972. He wrote novels, short stories. He uh, was a very interesting character. So I've been reading short stories. Still reading uh, The Manuscript Found in Saragossa by John Jan Polanek. And still reading The Edwardians by Veal Saxville West. So I read these. Still reading this memoir by the Zen Buddhist writer, Long Quiet Highway, Waking Up in America by Natalie Goldberg. And then I, I came across a new writer, a novelist. He's mainly a, a, an art critic, an art, writes about art. I think that's what he does. What he, he is a, a novelist, an art historian. But he writes novels. I never heard of him. So I bought one of his earlier novels because it seemed kind of interesting. His name is David Adams Cleveland, Love's Attraction. So I, if I see a novel that, uh, that seems really interesting and the writer I, I never heard of, I buy them. And I thought about doing a video of all the novels I've bought, I've not read. And then I, I've been reading about, uh, I've been reading V. Saxville West, who is part of Friends with Virginia Woolf, the Bloomsbury Group, 
that whole time period, you know, you know, I'm very fascinated with the Bloomsbury group, modern, early modernism there in England. And this book came out, I think it came out last year. Let me see, it came out in, yeah, 2020. And it was this book, Clive Bell was part of the Bloomsbury group. He was a, a he was a, a uh, the, the husband and of artist Vanessa Bell, Vanessa Bell, sister to Virginia Woolf. He, uh, I think he was a uh, like an art historian, something like that. Anyway. This is about his life, Clive Bell, The Making of Modernism by Mark Husley. So I got this to add to my Virginia Woolf and Bloomsbury collection. It was, I got it used for like $16. So I got that in the mail this week. A biography. Yeah. I have a biography on his sister, Vanessa Bell. And uh, so I thought I'd just, I'd just get it because I've been really reading this, really enjoying the Edwardians. I'm almost halfway done with it. And so I've been reading this in the evenings when I'm feeling okay. So those are things, you know, I'll start reading this when I finish reading this. Yeah, it says, uh, he has a new book coming out in the spring, uh, David Adams Cleveland that I pre-ordered. And uh, I admire him. He, he writes his very, he gets great reviews. His novels seem very interesting well read i mean well written intellectually stimulating so i just and i i support writers who write not because they're famous or they sell millions of books but they just write because they're writers so that's it i just thought i'd stop by and ramble to you guys say have it go in the middle of the month here in Michigan, the winter has been pretty bad, but there's probably been worse winters in the history of Michigan since the founding of this state. And I wanted to say hi to uh, Jim Clark there in Louisville, Kentucky. Do hope you have a good week, Jim. I hope you all have a good week. Stay safe, stay warm. I can't think, you know, one thing I, I had other things I wanted to say, but um, I suppose they're not important now. So I uh, hope you have a you had a good reading weekend. That you have a good reading week. Uh, as I've mentioned in the past, I'm a reader. I don't really I read. I like just the activity of reading. I don't have to finish something. Now here I've read a couple short stories in here, and I, I'm. I'm really enjoying reading this and almost done with this. So I do finish things, but I, it's not my goal. My goal is just to read, to enjoy immersing myself in some other world. Uh, but I like reading Spanish mysticism. And I like reading Edwardian theological studies. And, Jonathan Edwards, great American minister and theologian, and like reading medieval spirituality and Dutch Reformed theology and Dutch Reformed theology. But I like reading the Bible. <laughs> so I thought we were talking about adoption a minute ago. And I was thinking of those verses in Colossians, not Colossians, but in Galatians. If I can find them off the top of my head. He says, 
uh, how's it go? It says here in Gal in Colossians, not Col in Galatians, starting at starting at chapter three. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are at Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Then he starts in chapter 4. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all, but is under guardians and stewards into the time appointed to the Father. Even so, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So, all Christians have been adopted, and the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit, and we can cry out, Abba, Father. So, hope you have a good week. I have tons of thrift store books, book nook hall. I'll just get around to that someday. But I just want to stop by and say good morning, have a good new week, hope you're all well, and until next time, bye.